Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome Coffee with Kruger. I have my cup of coffee right here. And I hope you all have yours, <laughs> your favorite drink. Good to have you with us this evening. We're going to be looking at spiritual gifts tonight. And, uh, and we're going to begin with a word of prayer. How about that? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to, so that we're not comfortless until you return. And that Holy Spirit is alive and active in each one of us and within the church to give to the church and individual members of the body of Christ uh, giftedness so that we can be complete in you as the head. Um, help us, Lord, to discover and develop and, and use uh, these gifts so that we might better glorify you in, in our ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so... How many of you would say you know quite a bit about spiritual gifts? A show of hands. Two, three. How many of you know something about it or a lot or a lot? So that's, how many of you really would say this is a, uh, you're on a beginning of a learning curve on this, but to raise your hand. Uh, you're just kind of learning about this. Okay. So you know something about it. Let's take a look at three Bible passages that are the primary context for the discussion in the New Testament of spiritual gifts. And they are um, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians 4. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians 4. And those, first Peter also talks about the use of gifts within the context of the body, but we'll skip that for tonight. So I will turn on my share screen and go to my desktop. And uh, you should be able to see the, the Romans 12. Do you see that? Yes? I've got Romans 12. So looking at Romans 12, then, let's, let, let's look at... Um, Beginning at verse four, for as in one body, speaking of the church, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we though many are one body in Christ, individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. So the Lord gives to everybody a gift, one or more gifts. Anybody who is a Christian and has the Holy Spirit residing in him or her, automatically receives one or more gifts and let us use them. So now we're going to start to, to list the gifts, okay? And so um, the first one I see here is prophecy. So let me go over here and let me type in. Prophecy. Okay, if service, okay, service is another one. In our serving, teaching is another one. Exhortation is another one. The one who contributes. So we'll we'll talk about a giving the gift of giving. One who leads a leadership. Uh, leadership. The one who does acts of mercy. So showing mercy. With cheerfulness. Okay, so that talks about that. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. Now, there uh, are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. Varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. So you see it's to be used within the body of Christ. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. Okay, let's put down wisdom. Uh, 
to another utterance of knowledge. Let's put down knowledge. Faith by the same spirit. So there's a gift of faith that is apart from the kind that you have for believing in Jesus, it's special faith. Um, healing. Then what's the next one? Miracles. Wow. Um, miracles, prophecy. Prophecy, uh, distinguishing between spirits. So that would be discernment. Um, this was, tongues and, and uh, interpretation of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. All of these are empowered by one and the same spirit. Let's look at the third one now. This is uh, Ephesians 4, beginning at verse 11. He gave apostles. It looks like I'm going to need to uh, add, um, insert uh, a couple rows here. Okay, so what do we have here? So he gave uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, oh man. Apostles, I'm gonna call it apostleship. And then prophets we already have, do we have? Yeah, prophecy, we already have. Um, evangelists. Well, I'll guess the evangelist. And then what else is there? Evangelist, shepherd. Do we have shepherd already? Teachers, we have the gift of teaching already, right? Okay. Teaching. Anything else? Um, I think uh, that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six times three. We got about 18, 19 of them here. Okay, let's um, take a look at them for a second. So you get a few of you. Okay, let's see a couple more showed up since uh, I was on. Okay, what are spiritual gifts? First thing is we need to know that a spiritual gift is given by the Holy Spirit to every believer, one or more gifts. We don't all have the same gifts. None of us have all the gifts. Second thing to remember is that a spiritual gift is for the future use in within the, the church and is as distinguished from the fruit of the spirit that's mentioned in Galatians 5, like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. We receive all the fruit of the spirit. Every Christian gets all the fruit, love, joy. We're supposed to have all of that and use it and be the, like that. Whereas gifts of the spirit, most of us don't have the gift of evangelism, for instance. So if somebody can go up and share the gospel just to somebody else, cold turkey, just go up and share it. And you look at that person and say, how can that guy do that? It's because you don't have the gift of evangelism. If you have the gift of evangelism, you do it. If somebody can just write a check for some, if, if they have enough money uh, for a good hunk of change, to help the church out and they don't bat an eyelash, 
where you're counting your pennies before you give, that person has the gift of giving and you don't. And so while we may not have a gift, we sometimes exercise the function of the gift. While we may not have the gift of evangelism, all of us are called on to be witnesses. It's just harder. And that's why you, you want some, to get the people that have the gift of evangelism to be part of a budding new faith community or small group. You want somebody who has a gift of, of a hospitality or, or um, of uh, shepherding to, to be part of that group because they, they will, or helps to be part of that group so it can um, function as it's growing. Uh, the, the next thing to remember is that um, we do not get to choose what gifts we have. The Holy Spirit has given them to us. And if you're 15 years or older and a Christian, you need to know what your spiritual gifts are. How do you find out what your spiritual gifts are if you don't know what they are? You can look at the, the lists that we have and the meanings to each gift, uh, or you can try each one on for size and receive confirmation from the rest of the body of Christ. For instance, if you think you have the gift of preaching teaching and nobody shows up to your class, <laughs> Maybe you have a different gift. Maybe that's not your gift. Maybe you need to be in the kitchen or maybe you need to be someplace else. So you try it on for size and you get confirmation from the body. And they say, you know, I noticed how you are a wonderful teacher for those children. Maybe somebody said that to you when you had a Sunday school. Uh, and then you just, you're wonderful at that. And it just seems like it's a natural thing. Or for others, I can't stand working with these little kids squirming all over. No, no way, Jose. So uh, that's another thing. Another thing is that we, you, you need to discern a spiritual gift from the Holy Spirit from pseudo gifts and satanic gifts. Uh, gifts can be masqueraded by Satan and can be psychologically based. A true spiritual gift is something that you innately have and possess, and you need to develop it and begin to use it. Uh, and you can tell whether it's of the Holy Spirit by whether it's exuding the fruit of the Spirit as you're doing it. Love, patience, peace, kindness. As that's happening as you're using the gift, it's a spiritual gift. It's not just something that uh, you're putting on by yourself or induced by, by Satan. So let's look at um, these gifts and what they are. And uh, there is a, um, a quiz. I think I'll send you the link uh, after the recording. And the link is to do us a, a on-site, in, on, online, questionnaire uh, to determine what it suggests your gifts are. There may be, I don't know how many questions there are, but you will do a multiple choice and it will try to help you determine what you may have as spiritual gifts and you may begin to ask other people and so forth. So let me go through the, the gifts that are right there. The gifts of prophecy are, is not just telling the future, but it's mostly forth telling. A prophet is someone who tells the truth and isn't always well liked for doing so. So you have truth tellers and you have grace givers, right? So we lean one way or the other, but a truth teller, a prophetic, many of the prophets in the Old Testament, and even John the Baptist in the New Testament, they, they just told it like it was. Gift of prophecy. Gift of service is out there. Well, you're repairing the roof, you're helping out, you're ushering, you're, you're in the back doing things, counting, nobody knows it. You don't need to have everybody pat you on the back, you do it. The gift of teaching we talked about, and there are different kinds of teaching, teaching of adults, teaching of children, um, teaching one-on-one, -on -one, teaching large groups. 
the exhortation is um, is a motivational. You're exhorting. Uh, you you are painting the picture. It's like uh, painting a vision. Uh, God has given you that ability to do that. And um, the gift of giving is you don't worry about the tithe. You give. Uh, if you have to count the number of dollars and times 10% to get the exact tithe or whatever you're giving, you don't have the gift of giving. You're still supposed to do it, but you may not have that gift. Giving is just being generous and you're being generous not only to the church, but you're being generous wherever you go. Leadership. Uh, the gift of leadership is different than being elected to a governing board. The gift of leadership shows itself by your ability to lead people in a godly direction for God's preferred future. If you're in that, that place where you are helping to lead the sheep, the, the, the body of Christ in that direction, someone has to be leaders. You can't have everybody followers. Gift of mercy, you're in the hospital, you're visiting the sick, you're going to the jail, the prison, you, you are uh, just uh, kind toward people and bringing them meals and praying with them and all the, that's, that's the gift. Gift of wisdom, you're in a uh, MMF meeting, you're in a council meeting, you're in some kind of a get, get together and everybody is looking for an answer and you're saying, what about this? And you come up with the insight that others don't have, the gift of wisdom, knowing that it is a way that's appealing to God. That's different than the gift of knowledge. Knowledge is you're a data bank. You have lots of answers because you've read lots of stuff and you can give the answer. That's a little different than how you use it, how you apply it, that's wisdom. Knowing it is knowledge. The gift of faith is you're sitting in a meeting and everybody is belly aching. Oh man, Trinity Lutheran is going down the tubes. We don't have enough money for a pastor. And you say, but wait, what if God had his way among us? What if he brought new leaders, new, new givers, new people to our church as a result of our faith? Everything could change in a heartbeat. And you're exuding that faith. That's the gift of faith. Everybody has faith, saving faith. But this is something special. Healing, these are part of the sign gifts. Healing, miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, um, sign gifts that were prevalent in the New Testament age and are still around. And uh, at times people will speak in tongues in an unknown language. And it's usually done by the, by the Holy Spirit giving that person those, that kind of language to speak. And Paul says it can be abused within the church. It's best if you do this as in your private worship. He says that because he doesn't want people doing it unless there are two or three to interpret. And that's what the interpretation means, to interpret it into English or into the language everybody can understand so it becomes prophetic. But you don't know in advance if you have somebody to interpret when you're speaking in tongues. So you don't do it in worship, you do it when there is a controlled environment. Um, same way with healing, miracles. We've seen that, and I've seen that personally in my life. Miracles do happen. We're gonna be talking about that Sunday. Um, prophecy we put down twice. Apostleship, evangelist, teaching, shepherd, and then there's one, one other that we call the missionary. That's the fivefold or fourfold function of the of uh, leadership in the church. If you have a church where you have a leader who is, has the apostolic gift, apart from the, the 11 or 12 apostles originally in the New Testament, these are apostolic people, people who see the picture over a district or over a synod or over a region or beyond just the local the church, that's, that's the apostolic gift. They're the guardians of the gospel, of the doctrine. They make sure that we stay focused on 
who we are and the correct beliefs. The evangelist is someone who brings the word of God succinctly to someone within their own language group. For me, it would be English, middle-class English, say. And a, a missionary is someone who brings the gospel cross-cultural. And cross-cultural doesn't mean Hispanic only or Asian only, but it can also mean from one generation to another generation. Somebody in their 60s who can speak the language of an 18-year-old, they're missionaries. We need some parents to be missionaries, truthfully. Okay, so that's missionary. And, evan and, and then evangelist. And we also need the shepherd teacher. The, the a, a person who is the shepherd pastor, uh, it may not be called to be the pastor or the shepherd of the church, but they have that role. I'm actually quite a poor example of a pastor. My gifts lie more in prophetic and exhortation uh, and perhaps apostolic. Uh, I don't do well just sitting around holding old people's hands all day. I, I, I'm, I'm not wired that way. Others do that very well. Most pastors are very good at that. And so I find myself in ministry in different situations oftentimes than others. And we're not all made alike. But the shepherd teacher is a very important, very essential part of the church because they are a caring person. They know everybody by name. They care. They pray. They're with. They're flocking the people together. They're making sure there's unity. They're there all the time for them. That's very important. Uh, so that is that. I'm going to stop the share now and open it up for any questions you might have. It's really, really quick on spiritual gifts. Questions, comments? Quick question. Can, um, do spiritual gifts change over time? Generally not. Okay. You may discover a gift or two, um, and you may become more aware of it as you get older, but you are made uniquely by God, and he knew about it before the foundation of the earth. Uh, but it may develop in, in new ways as you get new experiences and may discover there's a new gift you had all along. Now, let me ask you a question. What spiritual gifts do you know you have? Anybody want to volunteer? <laughs> or think you have based on your experience? I know, I know. Okay. I've always teaching, teaching since I was 12 years old. And I mean, I've tried to get out of teaching and I can't even get it. I've tried to get another job like in retail or something and I never get it. Something comes up or something happens. So it's just not, it's always been teaching children and mercy also. I do like to write cards and encourage people on prayer a lot, faith. Good teaching. Let me get explain one more thing. Your career is what you do. Your mm -hmm. vocare, your vocation, is who you are. God hasn't called you to a career. He's called you to a vocation. What is your vocation for the Lord? That is your calling. That is based on, should be based on your gifts. If you have four hours you can spend on the church each week, they should be devoted to the areas of your giftedness. Now, sometimes you have to do other things. Church is small and you have to pick up, everybody pitches in. But if you can spend most of your time in the area of your giftedness, and if 80% of the church, teenagers and adults know their areas of giftedness, then instead of having a, when you're wondering who should we get to be in the MMFs, who should we get to do this, this that, you look at the gifts that are there that somehow published me even. Say, well, these people have these gifts. We're looking for it. Let's start there. And so teaching can be a career. Yeah. Teaching can also be a calling. 
And I see for you it's a calling. Um, Dale, what's your gift? Service. Mine is service, I believe. Okay, service. I'm behind the scenes counting the money on uh, Monday. Yeah, okay. I'm lighting the candles Sunday morning. Filling the candle. I'm filling the candles at the moment. Yeah, that's good. So, you know, uh, Wendy, we, we haven't talked much about music, but there's also in the Bible a gift of music. Of, um, but what, you, you certainly have that. What other gifts do you think you have, Wendy? Well, I'm, I'm also a really good teacher. Um, I have wonderful students and um, I really feel like through my teaching ministry, I, I have the opportunity uniquely to share Christ and love and um, encouragement with people. And I, I feel like I'm a good cheerleader as well that way. Or that way. Um, and I know I'm a, a leader, but I feel like that's something I more learned to do. Um, but I do naturally lead and I often get chosen to be like the leader of a section. Um, and I often get chosen to coach um, for, so that just kind of falls to me. I also um, lead music groups um, and I'm a very organized person. So that's sort of, I'm kind of good with administration as well. So, but um, I feel like- Three or four groups now. Yeah. yeah, I feel like teaching is um, something I was just um, really blessed to be able to do that. I, I didn't expect I would be so gifted in that, but I, I hear like what I'm supposed to say before I say it when I'm teaching. I, I kind of go through a little hierarchy and what does this person need to, to know right now, right away that will help them the most? And that's kind of always present with me when I'm teaching. So, so. then you know that and you get you're going to ask yourself, how are you going to use that now, not mm -hmm. in your career, mm -hmm. but how do you further use that within the body of Christ? Because some mm -hmm. of you are doing with music, but some mm -hmm. of those other areas, maybe you want to explore more fully in the future. Mm -hmm. about Kevin? What's his gift? Makeup. <laughs> what do you What's think? Different? What do you think, Wendy? Maybe he doesn't want to uh, say. <laughs> well, I think Kevin is actually really good with... Um, knowledge and um sometimes wisdom too because he'll say some something i never thought of that aspect of something and it's just so um so so right you know <laughs> so i think that's really good and he also serves every week he's he's back there doing stuff behind the scenes and i think that's really terrific and he's a good example or a role model of someone who's just kind of doing, that in, in doing his thing. being a christian doing his thing it show up, you know, right? So, and faithful. Thank yeah. you. You can give him a kiss now if you want. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you, Teresa? I think uh, my gift is probably a gift of faith and a gift of uh, being a servant in some ways. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I definitely don't want to put my God in a box. You know, there's so much he can do and I believe in him and I just watch him move every day mm. and work, I, you know, and let me participate. I sense you have the gift of faith um, from what little I've seen of you, but um, now, I'm not going to pick on all of you. You're starting to squirm a little bit. So I'm just going to say any of you want, of the others of you, want to share voluntarily what you think your gift is. We get confirm it within the body here or something you already know. I mean, I could look at somebody like Mark and say, I've spoken enough with Mark to know that he has no gifts whatsoever. No, 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 no. <laughs> That he, uh, <laughs> he, he's he got the gift of leadership, uh, doesn't he? And um, wisdom. But there are others, other things I don't know about Mark and uh, the rest of you. How about the rest of you or Mark? You want to share a couple minutes left? Well, I was just going to say I, I, I would agree. I think the leadership and wisdom have been 
a couple that have uh, been around, but also I think discernment was uh, is another one I think that sort of gone along with that from, I've done some of those uh, uh, quizzes in the past as well. So it's good. Anybody else? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Well, I see people who have the gift of giving. I see people who have who are very generous and kind-hearted. I see uh, little I've known of you. Uh, I'd say there's a lot of uh, a lot of mercy, a, a lot of uh, of um, giving and uh, serving, teaching. There's a lot of a lot of gifts right here. And this is uh, just a part of the body of Christ. So God has gifted us. Here's the last thing I want to say about this. God will always gift his church with everything it needs so it can do everything God wants it to do. The problem is not God. The problem is we don't always see what God is giving us. Sometimes we don't all have that gift of faith to see what's going to come our way in the next month. Who might walk in the door? What might happen? And I have seen this in 50 some years of ministry, every ministry I've had. God has answered, given the right people at the right time to do what he wants. Now, we got to make sure we're doing what he wants. And that's why we went through this process, that what is God's preferred future? And, and that's applicable to us individually, too. And we're going to talk about that just so happens this Sunday as we look at Jonah uh, stuck on a ship that's disintegrating. And uh, we'll talk about that this Sunday and succeeding weeks. Okay, I think our, I've run out of time. Anything else for the common good? Well, then let me close with prayer. I hope you've enjoyed this session and there's a lot more to it. I'll send some links to you in an email that'll go out tomorrow. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving and gifting the church as you have. We recognize you are the head, you're the chief cornerstone. Everything is built on you. And as we rely on you for our strength and our growth, we know that your arm is much longer than ours and your will will be done as you use us and others uh, to proclaim your mission and ministry in the world around us. Thank you for this time together. Bless our evening and our week now. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. amen.